dumb Jolly's joystick. Gaming on the move. The good thing about books is that you can take them around with you wherever you go. The bad thing about books, well, is that they're books, not computer games. So ever since games were first invented, man has strived to make them portable. To be honest, the results have been fairly crap. Worst of all were those old LCD games that promised the world on the fantastic coloured transparency stuck over the screen to protect it. It usually depicted some muscle-bound soldier of fortune in a dramatic pose, but when you peeled the sticker off and finally got the thing working, what you were actually greeted with was an uneven black squiggle moving back and forth across the screen. You'd have a go at frantically mashing the buttons for a minute before it would make the irritating bleep, which meant you'd lost, and then turn itself off. Probably forever. Things did get better, though. I mean, who could in good conscience criticise the mighty Game Boy, forever the benchmark of handheld consoles, and the reason every man of a certain age is physically incapable of looking at a brick wall without hearing an 8-bit Russian-style theme tune. If you say it's not playing in your head right now, you're either under 25, deaf, lying, or just being obstinate to make me look stupid. I wouldn't want that. And if it wasn't for that game on the Game Boy, I wouldn't be as good as I am at packing the boot of my car. Then came the Game Gear. Nice one, Sega. Change boy to gear, and it's totally not a rip-off at all. It was typically the one your cousin had. And he'd say things about it like, actually, it's like loads better than a Game Boy, before asking if he could swap like for keepsies. Freak. Now, I'd like to say that after the Game Gear, it all sorted itself out. But I can't, because we then entered the terrible doldrums of game-friendly phones, like the Nokia N-Gage. I think the N stood for knob. But eventually we surface, gulping for air at the present day, the age of the app, where the iPhone reigns supreme, and no tube journey or funeral need be devoid of entertainment anymore. But this is not without its problems. It's led to the emergence of the iPhone zombie. Dead-eyed people across the planet, staring at their phones as they cross the road, sit down for a romantic dinner, operate heavy machinery. We can't help it. We know you shouldn't. We've already got 400 games cramming up our SIM cards. We can't possibly need any more, but it's only 59p. Before you know it, sat on the tube, chewing your tongue, muttering to yourself, and staring intensely into your own lap with the rest of the growing iPhone undead. Still, at least it's a good way to keep the seat next to you vacant, along with the space next to you in bed at night. See you next time.